also known as ITLA scale models out of Dorchester and um, trying to uh, provide the model railroader with um, some highly detailed, easy to build, laser cut uh, wood kits. Um, just curious, has anybody um, had any experience building any wood kits? Have you ever, you've not done one at all? No? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to try to walk you through some of uh, what the benefits are today and, and some of uh, what we have offered. Um, in front of you, uh, one of the obvious um, products is these flat car and gondola decks and floors. And um, just for a um, sense of demonstration here, I want to show you um, what our product looks like up close. So um, this would be uh, what you would normally buy from some potentially some other competitors, just um, a product, a wood product that would have your uh, wood board lines and your bolt holes, etc. Mm -hmm. um, our version of that product looks like this. And our laser process provides a little more detail, um, a little more weathering effect. Mm -hmm. And if you feel that, there's also texture there that you can mm -hmm. discern with your fingertips. Yes. So, so you can see that when you look at these cars, mm -hmm. and uh, you can take a look at the stock model, obviously, with its painted yellow plastic deck. Mm -hmm. And you look at its uh, brother beside it there with the wood deck dropped right onto it, glued yes. in place, um, much, of a, much of a change. Yes. Similarly with the gondolas, Proto 2000 gondola and the uh, Rapido gondola very big uh, uh, improvement in terms of realism when you drop the product in. Okay, So all those are available basically N scale through O scale. But you guys are probably more interested in seeing some of the structures that we're, uh, that we're here to show today. And um, for example, we'll start off with some of the little ones. This is our motor car shed. Mm -hmm. And um, just put that in here. Um, includes a little base, uh, masonite base that comes with it. So you've got an opportunity to detail the interior. Yes. Uh, we don't have a, the, actually that hand card doesn't come as part of the kit, but you can easily drop one in. Uh, but you can see how there's t a lot of detail that you can take advantage of. Easy to build, um, easy to, to paint in weather as well. And we'll talk about painting and details shortly. Another example of um, one of our quick products is um, a large, uh, actually a tall uh, crossing tower. Okay, similarly uh, constructed, laser cut wood. Um, one of the neat things, um, if you look at this roof material here, this is uh, all etched in our base material, so there's no separate shingles that you might tend to want to lay on. This is a, this roof has an example um, of paper shingles isn't it, that you would lay on individually. So big difference, but you can see that with, you get a neat effect by actually etching that right into the product. Mm -hmm. So two of our, kind of our uh, entry level models. Um, if we talk a little bit about um, uh, painting the product before we get uh, further into the uh, larger models. Um, if you look here on, on um, the table, we've got a number of different uh, opportunities to, or methods to, uh, to use to color the product. One of the simplest methods that we've had some success with is actually magic markers, washable magic markers. So this building, could you Renee, if you don't mind? That building was actually colored with these magic markers. Mm -hmm. And really, you're just taking the base material, which would look similar to, where my wall section go, right there. Mm -hmm. And you'd basically start to color sections of that wall with these magic markers. Mm -hmm. And then you blend it all together with an alcohol wash. So you'd use a baby wipe or some form of a, a rag with alcohol on it. You get the color to bleed together, and that's what you're really after. Seal it with hairspray and uh, wash it with a mortar wash and in this case I used um, dry, believe it or not, dry plaster Paris. And just brushed it on, dry brushed it on, hit it again with a spray seal and it just nicely falls into the, into the cracks and crevices. So that's one technique we can use to, to color the product. The second and third techniques are a little more traditional, spray paints. The easy method is, is basically just using the old um, Automotive primer, grays, or or, uh, or the oxide reds, and then you've got the um, Krylon camouflage paints that are available to you. So if you take a look at this wall section as an example, that was done using basically trim clad uh, red oxide primer. So as your base coat, and then you basically go back over top of that with that same dry brush technique that I spoke of with the um, uh, with plaster. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't even seal that, I just left that dry. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of effect you can get. The concrete is actually brush painted, floquel aged concrete. Very easy to do, very basic. Here's a quick example. Okay. You can take that up a notch. You can do the, if we, if we look at the Grimsby station for a moment, 
This is done the old traditional airbrush, 50-50 um, solvent based paint method. So Floquel boxcar red on the walls, CN uh, green or any kind of green you want to use on the roof as an example. So that's a, an interesting way to show that the product can take the paint and the coloring in many different ways. So stays stable, doesn't warp on you, and produces um, I think a fine looking model. And it also has a texture that you don't necessarily get in plastic models. Okay. Let's talk a bit about the, uh, the structure of the models and the construction of it. So Grimsby Station is an example that we're going we're gonna to demonstrate with. Um, if you look at some of the componentry that, that we've designed, example the turret roofs, um, com com comprised of a couple different layers of materials, but um, all shingles are, latched, are sorry, laser etched on and um, easy to uh, wrap wood um, product that you can build around that, the uh, core section. It gives you that nice little turret roof. You can see that the in inner structure is all made of, um, of uh, tongue and groove, tongue and slot kind of construction that's uh, easy to fit. Tab and slot is probably a better way for me to put it. Mm -hmm. Renee, if we could just turn that upside down, you can see that it all fits into the, um, mm -hmm. the base nice and easy. You can't make a mistake. All the walls will, will go where they're prescribed to go. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a piece of product to get your hands around. So this is a base for that model as an example. So mm -hmm. if you, you give that a good feel, you can tell that uh, it's pretty stable. Mm -hmm. And then when you hit that with, um, with your weathering solution, it's not going to move on you. Yeah. Additionally, inside the kit are a number of different components that, that are cut out of uh, varying thicknesses of, of our uh, plywood. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that um, it's very stable product again, easy mm -hmm. to work with, mm -hmm. and uh, basically an enjoyment to build, to be honest. Okay. So far, so good. So that's uh, that's kind of a good example of our, our simple models, all the way up through some of our more complex models. So if I'm going to make a little space here so that I can show you something else. Okay. So what we're going to start um, putting out into uh, into the market by the end of November, something we're calling our three-in-one shallow factory series, so shallow wall factory mm -hmm. series. So the intention is, again, it's a backdrop type building mm -hmm. and anywhere from an inch and a half thick to four and a half inches thick, but it's loaded with detail. <coughs> so some of the detail, <coughs> example, everything you see here is included in the kit. So everything from this rooftop water tank to this staircase exit, the ladders, the pallets, pieces of pallets that you can easily uh, make yourself and the chimney sections, all of the cornice and brickwork that you see here, uh, the paper signs that you see on the walls will also be in the instructions, plus directions on how to apply those to the building. The loading dock, again, uh, similar to our flat car decks, comes pre weathered and etched with all that detail in it. And um, window treatments, you can kind of see different opportunities here for windows with ventilator fans. You can see um, blocked up windows, if I can just turn this sideways a little bit here, you'll see that we include wall uh, window blanks here as well, so that you can actually model it a bit of a uh, derelict or closed up building. You'll see another example of it there. And the back is blank because it's intended to be a backdrop building. Okay, So you might wonder why I called it a three-in-one building. Okay, So you remember that as we pull out the next model. The reason for that is there's another variation that you can build of that same kit. So the office building this time is on the right hand side. And you can basically mix and match wall sections to get the, the, uh, the look that you need or to fit the layout space that you have. Okay. So all the, all the detail that you see there is included in the, in the kit, including the skids, including those crates, all the, the um, railings, everything you see. And I'm going to show you the other variant. <laughs> Okay. That's the left side. That's the right side option. Exactly. And this is the third variant. So you can take that same kit and you can build this third variant mm -hmm. within it. So that's the full wall flat. Inch and a half wide by 19 and a half inches long. All the componentry to build either three of those versions is in the kit. Mm -hmm. 
If you look again at different detail that this model has that the others might not, you can see these exhaust ducts as an example, also in all through all kits uh, available to you to use as a modeler to your, with your discretion. You can model this building with the loading dock on the right side or you can interchange those walls and build that loading dock on the left side. Again, all the panels are designed to go together in a tongue and groove, tongue and groove format and you can model it, model it as you require for your own layout. Okay, rooftop detail as you can see all available. Here's a close up of, of that rooftop water tank as an example. That was a good example of a model that was built um, basically with those magic markers on the superstructure below that and the concrete pad all done with the magic markers and the, and the alcohol bleed technique. So all that's included in, in the product lineup. In the future we're moving towards some cityscapes as well. Same type of idea, we're going to have um, the shallow relief type buildings. We're going to have the front city, uh, front city block and the uh, rear alley city block type buildings available. So if I can show you that, there's an example of a couple of subcomponents that will eventually go into that product line. Maybe a third variant. So there's, these are still in development, there's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. We want to get into uh, varying heights and depths, etc. But basically that'll become our next uh, product line. Again, sticking to the shallow relief yeah. themes behind the, uh, the structures. It appears that's where everybody wants to go, right? Against yeah. the wall, right? Yeah. Shallow, shallow against the wall type of a layout. And that's it. That's where we're going with our stuff. And hopefully you'll enjoy building some of our products.